Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. It is so wonderful to have you join us for this very special Three Torches webinar series today. I'm Julie Decker, President and CEO of the FSU Alumni Association, and this is the third webinar of our new series, Three Torches. The university's motto, Vieres Artes Mores, is represented by three torches appearing in Florida State seal and symbolize the principles upon which the university was founded. As many of you know, these ideals stress the development of mind, character, and physical well being, and have guided us in selecting the conversations that we're presenting to you throughout the spring. Throughout the series, we've featured experts with the university community, not only highlighting the value of a particular degree from FSU, but also relevant topics in research, education, advocacy, service, and more. We are excited today to host our esteemed moderator and panelists, some of FSU's best. They're here to share updates from the new Dedman College of Hospitality and hear about the versatility of the hospitality industry. It's not every day that we get to feature an alumnus who works for a winning Super Bowl team, so we are really in for a treat today. As you're watching, I encourage you to submit any questions you have for our panelists in the Q&A feature in the chat today. Now, I'd like to introduce our moderator for today's webinar, Dr. Don Farr, Dean of the Dedman College of Hospitality and an FSU graduate. Dr. Farr came to Florida State University in 2007 to direct the college's PGA golf management program. In 2013, he became the assistant director of the Dedman School of Hospitality. Prior to coming to FSU, he managed a private equity golf club and two golf res resorts in the Pinehurst area of North Carolina. Dean Farr, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your partnership. I know we're all excited uh, to hear from our guests today and I really thank you for being here to talk with us and lead us. Well, thank you all. I appreciate everybody listening in. Uh, it's really exciting. Two of the things I absolutely love to do is brag a little bit about the Dedman College and brag a little bit about our alumni, and I get to do both right here. So I do appreciate it, and I appreciate your time. Uh, we are the newest college as of January 1st, but Dedman's actually been at Florida State University. We're ready to celebrate our 75th year um, as, a, as a school and college now. We're celebrating two months as a college or three months as a college with 75 years altogether as a program. Uh, we've been able to accomplish a lot in, in, the, in the last 75 years, but certainly in the last four. For those that don't know, we're located a couple places. We, we're located primarily in the stadium. Uh, we also have our global club management major out there at the golf course, uh, the only major in the world, and to brag, uh, a global club management major in the world and to brag a little bit. Our students won the Super Bowl of uh, club student groups by winning the chapter of the year out of the entire world uh, this past year. So it was exciting for us with the students doing that. Uh, we also hope to have a, some of you may read that the hotel might be coming on campus. And if it does, we plan on being a, a vital part of that hotel as well. Uh, we're ranked number 15 in the world, number seven in the U.S. That we came down from 40th in the world, which isn't bad because there's a lot of hospitality tourism programs. Came from 40th to 15th in just three years and number seven in the U.S. As I look at the other schools ahead of us, not so sure. Uh, I think the polls are a little biased, uh, but uh, we're really fortunate. We have some of the greatest researchers in the world of hospitality, literally. Uh, if you look at top tier journal articles published, per uh, research faculty, we're number one in the world. So they're very great researchers. And what's really neat for us is they're great athletes. They're also wonderful teachers. So it's sometimes difficult to get great teachers and great researchers, and, and we have them. We have three majors. The majors are global club management. We have a new major that uh, we borrowed from Panama City um, campus, and that's recreation tourism. And then we have the global club management, and we also have the traditional hospitality and, and tourism major. We also have a couple of certificate programs in event management and beverage management. We have a couple minors. So we, we do an awful lot. We have an international presence. Uh, we have a study abroad that will be celebrating 50 years of uh, going to Switzerland. And we're starting a new program in Italy coming up soon. We also have a new master's program uh, tied with the Jim Moran Entrepreneurship College. So that's an awesome partnership that we have 
uh, with that college. Our vision really, or my vision when I, I got here and the, and the team supports it, we want to make sure that every single student that comes through the Dedman College has the same opportunity of every other student. One of the things that happened to me when I was here, I was talking to one of the students about going to New York City for an internship. And they told me, they said they'd love to go, but they can't afford to do that. And I said, well, the internship pays. And, and I was naive. They said, no, I can't afford to get to New York for the interview for the internship. So now uh, through generous uh, donors and alumni, we make sure that there's monies for those folks. We actually even have three $10,000 scholarships for our Switzerland study abroad program. Uh, so every student that goes through Dedman can truly experience the same thing as every other student. So that's probably what we're most proud of. Now I get the great opportunity to uh, introduce Brian Ford. Uh, Brian's the COO of, yes, the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's a 1989 alum of, uh, of the Dedman College, and he was our 2018 alumni of the year. He's also on our Dean's Council. And so I thank you for that and giving his time generously. He oversees all aspects of the day-to-day -day business operation and community involvement for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They have a, he's the winner of multiple Voice of the Fan Awards, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it's kind of like the Super Bowl of hospitality within all the NFL clubs. And uh, Brian may, may touch on that, but it's really exciting, multiple winner of that award, the, the Super Bowl of hospitality in, in the NFL. Um, he is, you may not know this, the second best athlete on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers next to Devin White. Uh, he's a triathlete, which I assume is running, biking, and um, swimming, because I consider myself a triathlete as well. I fish and I hunt and I golf. Uh, I guess a little bit different, but uh, you also, it says 16 straight years of running a marathon, which is absolutely incredible, and ran a half marathon. There you go. You've been with the Buccaneers since 2006. That's which correct. is about 15 years. Oversaw, so he oversaw a recent, recently oversaw a $160 million renovation of Raymond James Stadium and the indoor practice facility as well, which if you haven't been down there, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, and you talk about giving back, and that's one thing we talk about with our alumni. And Brian has given back time and some dollars and all kinds of things, but he gives back to the community also of Tampa. Uh, he's on the Pediatric Cancer Advisory Board the Ronald McDonald House Board, CEOs Against Cancer, board, this is really special to me, but the board of the 2022 Special Olympics. Uh, and most importantly though, that I know about Brian, he has a terrific family, his wife, Judy, his sons, Brian and Brandon. And you know, it's funny when people ask me about Brian Ford, you know, Brian Ford, the things that come to my mind is not the CEO of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, my, my director or, or Dean's uh, board, it's really my friend, Brian Ford, and that's over and above everything. So it's really my great pleasure to uh, announce Brian Ford as our guest. Wow. Well, thank you very much, Dean. And uh, I really appreciate and thank you, Julie. And thank you for everybody that's joining. I'm very humbled by this and uh, I'm really excited. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, before we came on board, uh, the alumni strength of Florida State University has been a big impact of my career and since I left Tallahassee. Um, you know, to tell everybody a little bit about me, I, I grew up in a small town in South Florida, Miramar, Florida. And as uh, the dean mentioned, uh, I've been married to my middle school sweetheart, not high school, not college, but middle school. Uh, we're going on 32 years in August. And uh, yes, we're both Knowles. And uh, we have two sons that uh, attended. One uh, is still living up in Tallahassee, working for the Department of Education, and he graduated with his uh, master's degree last uh, May. And the other one, uh, Brandon, is still uh, finishing up his master's and hoping to start law school in the fall. So uh, we are true seminal, uh, a true seminal family. But uh, as far as my career, I, I actually started uh, in sports uh, with the construction of Joe Robbie Stadium for the Dolphins. I grew up a big Dolphin fan. And, uh, you know, while attending FSU uh, back in 1987, that uh, stadium opened up. And I got into a line of business called Contract Food and Beverage. And I was with uh, the same company, Fine Host, and I moved around uh, six different states and all sorts of different venues but I always knew sports were where I wanted to uh, 
land. And I uh, always promised my wife I'd get her back to Florida. So six states uh, from Pittsburgh to Richmond, Virginia, to Austin, Texas, Phoenix. Uh, our oldest son was born in Austin, our youngest in Atlanta, Georgia. But again, in each of those stops, one of the big things that I always reached out to was to find out, you know, who else from a Florida state, you know, was there a uh, booster, you know, meeting going on? And, and I was able to find Seminoles in each of those state, uh, cities and states. Uh, but I finally made it back to Tampa in, in 1998 with the construction of Raymond James Stadium. So I went from Joe Robbie or, uh, Stadium, JRS, to Raymond James RJS, kind of kind of crazy. And that's where I uh, started my, uh, my passion with the Buccaneers. Um, I was in that role for about nine years uh, from a food and beverage, heading up all the food and beverage in the stadium. And as the Dean mentioned, I just wrapped up. It's kind of ironic, you know, 20 years later, we just finished up a $160 million renovation. So I was walking around with a hard hat back in 98. And uh, now I'm, I'm kind of finishing it up and, you know, still doing construction. So my boys have kind of grown up at Raymond James Stadium. So as you mentioned, the Super Bowl, it was unbelievable, an unbelievable experience, but to be in it, but to be in it in our own stadium right here in our backyard was just amazing. But uh, I spent 14 years with that uh, contract food and beverage company. And now, you know, 2020 was our 15th, my 15th season with the Bucks in this role as chief operating officer. And I'm exaggerating just a little bit when I say that we won more games this year than the 14 years prior combined. It's a minor exaggeration, but not much. But, uh, you know, through those 14 hard years, you know, one thing came to, to mind. And, you know, what is sports? Sports is the entertainment business and hospitality. So when you think about throwing a, a party or a game on Sunday, it's just a big party for 66,000 people. And you can only control what you can control. And, uh, you know, my uh, team here in Tampa, they hear me all the time to say, say one thing that we uh, can be uh, affected by what happens on the field, but we can't be dependent, all right? There's a big difference. We can be affected. And believe me, I was much smarter Monday after the Super Bowl than I was the uh, Friday before. And uh, everything is a lot better when you win. And winning the ultimate, it's, it's just amazing. So uh, in my role, I oversee all of the business uh, aspects of the organization. So I report to the Glazer family and have about 225 people, eight executive direct reports, and it's just amazing. Um, I love what I do, and I'm humbled every day that I get to do it. Um, it it's definitely, um, again, the folks that I get to interact with in and around Tampa, and you know, we like to call Tampa Champa Bay now, or, or Title Town. It's just a, amazing, uh, the, the sports support that we have in this community. And with the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Tampa Rays, uh, it, it, it's just been, been an amazing 2020. In fact, we have an event going on uh, tomorrow where we're getting all three mayors, St. Pete, Clearwater, and Tampa, and we're bringing the three trophies together. This hasn't happened. Uh, the last time that the same city won a, a football championship and a uh, NHL championship was back in 1952 and it was Detroit and it was before it was even called the Super Bowl. So we're very proud of that. But, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me if I was disappointed that we hosted uh, the Super Bowl, you know, coming out of a pandemic because there weren't a lot of the events that you would typically see with a Super Bowl. And the biggest thing I was disappointed was all of our fans couldn't be there. Yes, we were at the stadium, but we only had about 25% capacity. Uh, but I kind of flipped it and said, you know, as a community, we're probably more proud that we were able to host coming out of that. And it was an international platform, not just a national platform. And we showed that, you know, people could get together and we could, um, you know, hold a major event like that without a, a spike. And, uh, you know, we did that and we hosted that trophy and had a boat parade after and just amazing. I just, again, wish all of our fans could have been there uh, that night and, uh, it's, uh, it's been an unbelievable ride. And uh, before I turn it back over to you, Dean, I, I, I have a video that I'd love to just uh, pop up and maybe we can get some folks excited about Tampa Bay football here.
Tom Brady has an agreement in principle to join the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as their new quarterback. This was a very smart and, for me, unexpected move from Brady. Brady and Breeze play twice a year. My gosh. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. We try to provide you a distraction from it, but there will be overlap between COVID-19 and the National Football League. Whoever stays healthiest and safest this year, that is who wins. Go! I think that they are a playoff team. I think it's a wild card situation. I, I don't know if they can go from a wild card spot to the Super Bowl. The Saints are favored. The Saints have won it three years in a row. And the Saints may be the best team in the NFC. I still believe it. Uh, well, a little technical difficulty, but that was, it's exciting every time I cue that up. Tom Brady has an. Looks like we'll see if we can try to get it back where we had it from, Brian. It's a great video, so let's see if we can get it back up. But there will be overlap between COVID-19 and the National Football League. Whoever stays healthiest and safest this year, that is who wins. Go! I think that they are a playoff team. I think it's a wild card situation. I, I don't know if they can go from a wild card spot to the Super Bowl. The Saints are favored. The Saints have won it three years in a row. And the Saints may be the best team in the NFC. I still believe in Bruce Arians. And I think they have the pieces to be an awfully good football team. Up the gut, touchdown Tampa Bay. And down he goes. Aaron Rodgers gets sacked again. Devin White. Look, man, you guys got a good team. Yeah, you too. Yeah, See you, baby. So Tampa has now lost two in a row. The Buccaneers are the story, Rex, as they continue to struggle. They're running out of road here. They've got to get it figured out. Nobody bounces back like Brady. You look at the number. He has a 787 winning percentage immediately following an in-season loss. And for the first time in 13 years, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are headed to the NFL playoffs. Intercepted to the 42-yard line. Look out from behind. He gets brought down. Pop ball touchdown, Tampa Bay. Second and nine now. This one's Pitt, intercepted by the Bucs. This one's up for grabs and Pitt gets a block to the right side. Now another block just flushed out. He sacked at the 35 yard line. That's Johnny Miller in the open. Makes the catch. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. The first franchise in the history of the NFL who will play in the Super Bowl in its home stadium. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers a second Super Bowl title in franchise history. To hold Breeze, Rodgers, and Mahomes at bay. Has it ever been harder? Ever? We're going for two. All right, we're going for two, and we ain't stopping. They had systematically found a way to bring back the players that they wanted to bring back. It is kind of scary when you think about what they could do. All right, we're back on there. Wow, that you was watch that video, Dean, uh, again and again. It's uh, just amazing. And again, humbled by uh, the experience. And, you know, to do it two, uh, three road playoff games. We In 14 years, we didn't make the playoffs. And then uh, to, to, to make it, you know, that year, uh, this year, this past year, and three road playoff games and to win it and to, to bring it back to Tampa and host it in our own stadium, just uh, – it was quite the experience. Well, congratulations. That, that's absolutely amazing video. Gene Decker often gets you excited about playing football. Absolutely. Gene, another Florida State uh, friend, and I'm the guy behind the scenes to try to get him to our games after he plays uh, or, or does the Florida State games on Saturday. So uh, a couple of years ago, we played in London, and that was a bit of a challenge. But uh, he's, a, he's a great sport and a good friend. and. Uh, he may even be on this uh, Zoom here today. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. So you st sort of started out traditional hospitality with the food and beverage, um, but, but then your career kind of morphed in a different direction. Can you tell us what skill set you learned maybe in the hospitality program and the value of the hospitality degree and the Florida State University degree and what you do? 
no, it, it, uh, it, as I mentioned, sports is entertainment. So I started out in contract food and beverage in big venues, everything from convention centers to NASCAR to baseball, sports and entertainment, airports. And it's just, uh, you know, getting where large groups of people congregate and sports. That's what we hope. We, we hope we can uh, generate enough excitement in whatever we're doing that bring people out. And, uh, you know, nobody needs sports. Nobody needs hospitality. Um, you you got to put a roof over your head. You have to have transportation and food and, you know, to survive, but you don't need. And so there's a lot of things that are pulling at the discretionary income of everybody and everybody's competing with it. And you look at your, your, your own self, you're a big golfer and you like to golf and uh, we're competing with all sorts of um, outside components. And a lot of times things are out of our control that we can't fix. Um, so it, it's, you got to make sure you exceed people's expectations, not just meet. Cause if you just meet, okay, I tried it. It was great, but I'm on to the next thing especially in today's environment. And uh, so you have to, you know, going back to, to hospitality, it's, it's just exceeding people's expectations, giving them what they didn't expect. And, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, we can be affected by what happens on the field. And believe me, I, I wish we could control it, but we can't. And uh, 14 years of, you know, you don't get the first round pick, Dean, for uh, the <laughs> real high. Now we did get a seminal in that experience and what an experience that was. And, yes. and Jameis is a great uh, individual and he's going to have a great career in the NFL. And I just wish he was not in our division uh, anymore. <laughs> we'll, we'll see where that goes, but uh, mm-hmm. sports is a lot of, uh, you know, people interaction. Uh, you can have the best laid plan, but it comes down to people and putting the right people in the right place, listening to people in those different departments and different positions finding out exactly what it is they need from a resource standpoint, and then, you know, basically setting the expectations, providing those resources, whether it be time, money, uh, equipment, um, research, and uh, then holding people accountable and uh, making sure that we listen. You know, that's probably the biggest thing in any business, but especially in what we do, we we need to listen because I might have a great idea and think that it's great and this is what everybody wants, but uh, I got to listen to the feedback and to the results. And uh, analytics has played a big key in, our, in all of our businesses lately and just trying to find out what exactly the facts are. And uh, again, I, I trace that back to Florida State and trace that back to hospitality. So you can see I'm wearing my collars. I'm sporting my collars. I, I don't know if you can all see that. I, 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 I got to tell you, this shirt fit a whole lot better about a year and a half ago when I got it, pre-COVID. It's a little tight now. Um, I, I need to ask you a question that, that I think we all really want to know. Do you know Tom Brady? <laughs> Absolutely. Tom is a, is a great leader on and off the field. He brought a culture to our organization of exceeding people's expectations, and he held people accountable. Um, he, uh, he brought his teammates. He brought our organization. You know, we, we recently uh, won an Emmy for our digital department. And I got to tell you, Tom Brady affected that. He, he held those, you know, that the, the folks in our department, in our digital department uh, accountable to try to put out the best information, especially during a COVID pandemic. So our fans could, could be there and, and be a part of our organization. So uh, now Tom is, uh, I'm excited that he's coming back. It makes us old guys uh, think uh-huh. uh, that we can do it. And, uh, you know, you mentioned marathons, you know, that that's just uh, my way of of trying to, you know, running is my way of trying to, you know, have some release. And, uh, you know, I I, I can't just be the pencil pusher on the, you know, on the back office. I got to be able to relate to these guys that are on the team. And, you know, so doing a couple of triathlons here and there, you know, it gives me some uh, icebreaker, uh, ice breaking moments, as I'd like to call. I hope you're not offended by me saying you're the second best athlete, but Devin White is just awesome. So I thought I'd, Absolutely. And he's a great individual. I mean, just uh, that's one of the, uh, the, the beauties of in my role, when I get to meet the players and interact with the players, it's on a whole different platform from our coaching staff and our scouts and our general manager, Jason White. Um, my number one reason for meeting our, our team is to get them involved in our community and to try to get them out and to become part of Tampa. And uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but all NFL players have Tuesday off. That's the day that, uh, you know, after a game on Sunday, they come in on Monday, get some treatment, you know, 
get with their position coaches, discuss what worked and what didn't work in that game plan from that prior game. And then you never look back. You're always looking forward to the next game. Players kind of get out on Tuesday and that's when the coaching staff comes up with a game plan for the next game. And that's when we try to get those players out in, 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 uh, into the community. And you mentioned a couple of things that I'm very passionate about, whether it be, you know, McDill, and uh, I'm honored to be an honorary commander of the 927 uh, refueling wing and getting out there with uh, Central Command and uh, General McKenzie, our SOCOM and our Special Forces guys, and trying to bring just, you know, some joy to their lives. You know, and I, I tell people every day they do what they do so we can do what we do. And uh, we got a big military town here uh, with Veterans Hospital and just trying to resource and trying to get our players involved into that community. Uh, we also are very involved with Hillsborough County uh, Public Schools and Pinellas County Schools and Pasco. And, you know, we have our, uh, our schools that we adopted and trying to get our, our players involved into that community. Uh, in fact, I, I tell a story often that people don't uh, sometimes even think about, but, you know, the first people that our, our players get to meet when they join our organization is our community relations team. So we can kind of learn who they are. You know, was your mother a police officer? Was your father in the military? Was your mother a teacher? Did your grandmother die of leukemia? What is it that makes you tick? So when we put you out into the community, it's not an appearance. There's a big difference. And we've all been at events where people are making appearances and they're checking their you know, watch and finding out, what do you want me to do? When do I get a leave? But if we can team up our players in an environment or a cause, you know, you mentioned Special Olympics, Cam Brait, that individual who caught that Super Bowl trophy across, uh, you know, Tampa Bay is very passionate about Special Olympics. So it's just trying to set our players up for the best that they can be and uh, to give back to the community. And that's very important because, unfortunately, you can't win this Lombardi trophy every year. You know, people no. ask me, what's the best marketing plan that you've ever seen? The best marketing plan that I've ever seen is, you know, number 12 plus number 87 and winning. Okay. Um, and Brady. You know, my marketing department would uh, kind of be a, a little offended by that. But, you know, winning helps everything. But you can't win every time. So you have to do the little things because they mean the most. And, uh, you know, after the Super Bowl win, we want to go. You heard Coach uh, Aaron's on that video. We're going for two, and we've been very successful in keeping the, the band intact, as I like to say, and keeping the team. Jason Light and his scouting department, we've got the best general manager, best scouting department in, in sports, and they've kept the team together. They've figured out a way. So we're excited about that. We want to be there in L.A., but uh, it's, uh, it's important to, to get to know the players on a different side and to get them involved in our community. So I know well, that we got Long-winded answer to your question. Good answer. Good answer. We got some questions coming in, but before I get there, you said you can't win every year. Um, Tom Brady has won seven Super Bowls, I believe. That's correct. Bill, Bill Belichick has won six Super Bowls. Um, if, in fact, the voice of the fan report, which is a, I guess, an NFL survey on customer satisfaction from your season ticket holders, you won seven. No, and you won seven in the last nine years. No, that's uh, and so thank so, you for bringing that up, and 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 I kind of credit that back to, you know, the school, you know, Deadman and, and hospitality, and and just the, the culture of trying to exceed your customer customer base's expectation, and, and that's really what we do. And I I credit our ownership family, the Glazer family, because they're passionate. They're passionate. They want to be be number one on and number one off the field. And you're right, we've been ranked number one seven of the last nine years. And usually surveys kind of reflect what's happening on the field. Right. So I'm very proud of being a part of our 2020 Super Bowl 55 team, but I'm equally as proud of the efforts that our staff has put forth to, to, to get that recognition throughout the, the NFL. And the NFL goes out, uh, we're a very much best practice organization as a league. And if it works in, in Charlotte, it can work in Tampa. If it works in Tampa, it can work in Philadelphia. So there's a lot of, you know, Jason Light does not share trade secrets with his counterparts. But Brian Ford is, is COO. I do because we are a revenue share league. So I'm concerned about um, ticket sales in Tampa, but equally concerned across the league. And we want to make sure that we maintain 
you know, uh, our, our, our stance is the number one sports league in the world. And uh, we have to exceed our customer, customer basis um, expectations uh, day in and day out. And it's ever changing. And people, you know, getting back to my comment earlier, as far as discretionary income, nobody needs sports. So, uh, yeah, equally uh, proud for the recognition that, you know, our fan base and the number one thing, you know, that I can take away is, um, or to recommend is, is listen. You have to listen to your customer base because they'll tell you what they want or what they don't want. And if they're telling you that they like something, continue doing it. And with us, it's very difficult because we have different buckets of fan base. We've had folks that have been with us since day one. We call them our charter seat holders. They've been with us since 1976 or before that when uh, Tampa was awarded a franchise. And those guys, they've been with us through thick and thin. You know, we started out 0-26 and, and they stuck with us. And, uh, you know, we've won two Super Bowl teams. We're, we're uh, one of very few teams that can say that, but they've been there. Then we have the folks that have been with us and, you know, aren't with us anymore. You know, what, what happened there? And that's a, a group that I try to concentrate on quite a bit. And then the real interesting group is the folks that have never been here. You know, Tampa is a very up and coming, very uh, interesting community. And there's folks that have never experienced a Buccaneer game. And I try to meet every one of them to try to get them to come out. You know, I do, but uh, you know, so you have to have a different strategy depending on what your target audience is. And well, I, so when we're talking about the GOAT, Brian, and, you know, it took Tom Brady 20 years to win his seven Super Bowls. You know, it just took you nine. Just thought I'd put that out there. Yeah, I appreciate that, but it's a team effort. And again, I credit our ownership uh, family, the Glazer family, for having that passion and giving us the resources to be able to do what we do and exceed and to change things up. You can't do what you do day in and day out and just keep repeating it because then it gets and, old and to have customers love your product when your team you know a couple of those years were down years when maybe four or six wins and not super bowl champions so congratulations to that the other thing before i get to my fir the first question um what was your most exciting moment you're sitting there you're watching the game was it the final seconds as the as the clock ticked off was it when you finally realized that you were the one that was going to help design the Super Bowl rings? Or was it when you saw Tom Brady pass Lombardi Trophy to Cameron Bray? What, what was the most exciting thing about this entire journey? You know, all of the above. And okay. It was a ride to get there. It was the three playoff road games. It, it was, uh, I'll tell you, you know, Raymond James Stadium, we just wrapped up our, our 22nd season. And I've been there for every game, if you can think about that, in one wow. capacity or another. And Super Bowl 55 was the first time in all those years. And think about that. That's a lot of games, Steve. And, and you've been there. That was the first game that I was actually able to sit and watch the entire game with my family. I've seen you work it and, and you do an amazing uh, job. The, the lead told me that I could not, you know, the, the, you know, everybody's heard a lot of the, the feedback about competitive advantages and you know they it's never happened before a host team has never been a participating team in a super bowl so it was yeah, uncharted that. territory for the league and they told me that you can't just walk into the stadium on game day and it's you know treat it like any other home game you can't right. be walking, you know this you have to pretend that you're somewhere else so that forced me to actually watch the game and i was able to be there um, with my family. And that was probably the biggest memory. Well, I, I know that's awesome. Again, some good questions here. Brian, can professionals who may be working in industries beyond sports, entertainment, hospitality, get into your industry, especially if you may have general business and operations transferable skills? Uh, in other words, is it possible to do what you do that, that uh, without coming from hospitality? And I assume that not every COO is a hospitality graduate. But now, then not every COO has won seven out of nine championships either for hospitality. Now, you know, there's 31 other guys that have my job and none of them came up through food and beverage. So I'm kind of proud of that when I go to league meetings. There's attorneys, there's sales, uh, there's marketing you know, guys, but nobody came up. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, uh, that's a credit to, to, you know, the foundation that, that had been provided in Florida State. And uh, to answer the, the original question, though, um, yes, if, if you think about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as an organization, we have every department or component 
um, that any business, it's a business when you, when you take away the X's and O's and get out of it. We're in the entertainment business. We have an accounting department. We have a chief financial officer. Uh, IT reports up through him, purchasing reports up through him. So just like any other business, uh, you know, we, we have a PL and forecasting and budgeting. Uh, we have a chief legal officer in HR and our facilities and security reports up through him. And, you know, just like any other organization, we have employee training and recruitment. We have a recruiting manager. Um, so, yes, there's not a career that a graduate from Florida State or any other uh, college could name that we don't have some aspect of that within our organization or within sports. So I encourage people to look out. We have a, a great associate program. Thank you for the opportunity for me to, to kind of sell our brand, but uh, we uh, have a great, um, we don't call it an internship program because it's, we're looking for folks that are in sports management that want to get into sports. Because I will remind you that uh, sports is the entertainment business. So it's not Monday through Friday. It's not nine to five. And when everybody else is playing and going to that big event, when you're in the entertainment or sports business, that's when you're showtime. That's when you're on stage. So you got to get into it for the right reasons. And uh, we have a uh, associate program for recently graduated folks that are either looking to get more experience to get that, that first big job or to go on to a graduate type uh, education you know, degree program. And they want to get some experience before going into that. And it's 26 weeks, it's paid, and it's a phenomenal program. And uh, we'll good. definitely share information that we can send out to whoever joined us today. To, but it, all the information is on our website. I will say that. Buccaneers. Very, very good. Well, we know adjusting is important on the, on the playing field, but it's also important in what you do. And you ha obviously have adjusted to have the success that you've had over these 20 years. This was really a year of adjustment with COVID. Um, and one of the questions out there, in what ways do you think the sports industry will have to adjust to the impact of COVID, not just from the budgetary or fiscal side, uh, but an overall impact on how people engage with entertainment? No, it, it's, been, uh, it's been an ongoing process. And, uh, you know, I, I, um, I've said to a lot of people that I think sports has helped because it's given a platform to show that it can be done. And uh, if you look across all of the sports, from Major League Baseball to hockey, to basketball, you know, the show went on, you know, we, we had a Super Bowl, you know, last year, you know, we were talking going into the season before COVID hit. And I told you, my God, you know, we're going to host a Super Bowl this year. And, you know, nobody's ever done it before, but we're going to play in our own Super Bowl. And there we, we, we did it, but uh, you know, we didn't miss a week as a league. There weren't games postponed and we kept changing what the protocol was to do that. I was tested every day from July until, you know, the week after the Super Bowl, every day, as were the employee, uh, the players and coaches and anybody that was in our bubble. I was in our bubble. And uh, it's, it's just adapting. And I think sports needs to continue to adapt to give people the assurance and, uh, you know, the comfort to be able to come out and attend an event and in a safe manner. And, you know, you know, we, we've talked before, 9-11 changed the way that we look at travel. I think COVID is going to change the way that people look at um, how do you, you know, host large groups of people in an environment that people feel comfortable. And I think it's uh, an evolution. I don't think we've seen the end of it. And we'll continue to adapt because that's what we need to do. And, uh, you know, through the feedback of our fan base, what do you feel comfortable doing? You know, what, what is it that's going to set us apart so you want to come out to a venue and cheer on a team and uh, hopefully to victory? That's awesome. Uh, what trends do you see happening in the NFL in your industry changing? Um, you know, bigger stadiums, smaller stadiums, less seating, more seating, or any other area? Are there certain trends that we'll see in the, in the NFL? Well, there's a lot more of this you know, what we're doing here today, a lot more virtual, you know, you think that'll got, continue. I, I think it's going to be an added component. I, I still think people are going to want to come out and see things in, in, in person, but uh, you know, we're, we're coming up on our draft party next week. Um, you know, Miller is one of our big sponsors and we, we have the Miller light draft party coming up Thursday night at Raymond James stadium. And it's going to be closed this year not open to the public, but just to our members. 
but we'll also have a component that's going to be virtual. And uh, Miller couldn't be more excited. Last year, we, we never did it before. We had a virtual draft party, and it was a big success. So I, I see us learning. Um, again, what I think that we're all coming out of COVID uh, saying is never say never, and let's find a way. Let's work together, figure out what is the most efficient way to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, and how can we do it? And it's going to be ever-changing, but uh, we just have to listen to, to people and, and react to what comes about. But, you know, 2020, if it taught us all anything, it's never say never. So I always thought that I had the greatest job in the world. In my old life, I was a golf professional, and now I'm an administrator at, at Florida State University. Um, I love Westcott, the folks at Westcott. I love the research component. I love the administration component. But I really love the interaction with the students the most. What is it in your job that you like more than any other part of your job? No. Again, all of the above. I, I, the interaction with the folks that, that are on our team that are um, you know, working so hard to deliver a, a, an experience that is not on the field. And uh, that, that's a lot of fun to try to figure out new ways to do things. Because again, it, it gets, if you just keep showing the same thing, it, it, it doesn't work. So working with our team, uh, working with our ownership team that, that are constantly trying to move the bar to, to create a culture where we, we exceed people's expectations. Um, working with our alumni players is uh, just phenomenal. I love all the old guys that uh, come back. They've been with us, you know, from the Mike Allstotts to the Derek Brooks, another Florida State, you know, guy and Dexter Jackson. I'm the guy that kind of gets them to, to come out to different events. Uh, so that interaction is great. But at the end of the day, it's the fan base. It's uh, Tampa Bay. It's the community. Being involved in our community, in my position, allows me to, to just bring awareness. You know, that's why I, I sit on the boards that I do. You know, I try to bring awareness about the Ronald McDonald board. I try to bring awareness to what Special Olympics is doing. So that is probably the, the biggest thing that I cherish is that opportunity. And it's humbling. It's humbling to be able to, you know, we've got a fan base. I mean, we have a fan base in the UK. I, I think I connected yeah. you with it on, on a recent visit. And, uh, you know, before each of our, our playoff games, um, I did a Zoom the morning of the game because I'm a little wow. creature of habit. You might notice in some pictures, I, I wore the same red tie. I could not take that tie off and change that tie. And uh, with our last regular season game, I, I started this tradition and just thank you. You know, we have the largest fan club in the UK and uh, the gentleman that started a gentleman by the name of Paul Stewart. And I asked him one time, why did, were your parents, <laughs> did you put him in the how, how did you choose this? And, you know, his answer was one that I don't share with a lot of people, but he told me, Brian, us Brits, we love an underdog and any team <laughs> I was in college, any team that started out, Oh, and 26, I was hooked. You know, I was constantly pulling for that underdog. So I said, no, we don't want to market that. But, you know, these folks are across the pond. They get up five hours later, you know, than where we are to watch our games, to watch the draft, to watch, you know, different things. They, they nominated, me, nominated me the uh, Buccaneer of the Year this past <laughs> week. And it's, it's just crazy. And it was because I took the time to thank them and to do a Zoom with them before each of our playoff games just giving them my behind the scenes, this is what we're doing and how we're doing it. And, you know, talk about passion. And, uh, you know, the best part of my job is just thanking everybody that has the passion for our brand. And it's easy when you're winning, believe me. I've seen a lot more buck flags and I love it. I've seen a lot more folks wearing shirts. I, I can't go anywhere right now. But, you know, turn the clock back a few years ago and, you know, when we were winning three or four games and, you know, to have that fan base with us you know, through thick and thin, you know, I think it's my responsibility to thank them whenever I get the opportunity. Somebody can fact check me, but I do believe an FSU quarterback was at the helm during Tampa Bay's first win. Gary Huff, I believe, was the quarterback. Oh, during you're, that you're first absolutely win. right. I use that in my uh, my roadshow dialogue sometimes, but you're absolutely you right. Got a seminar up there. Kudos to Gary. Uh, you and I talked about this next question a, a little bit last night, and, and I think anyone in hospitality uh, understands the challenges. I've seen you work and you work all the time, evenings, phone calls, late at night, uh, during a game, you really don't get to see the game because you're up there entertaining. 
how do you handle the work-life balance in a job that is truly that demanding? Well, you know, it, it, that's a great question. And again, it, it's not a traditional work environment. It's not Monday through Friday. It's definitely not nine to five. And sports is happening constantly, whether we sign a player or sign a, a, a new coach or um, in, it's alive and you have to be there. And in my role, there's a lot of late nights. There's a lot of early mornings. There's a lot of long days, but you got to love what you do. And that's probably the biggest advice that I could give. And I speak to a lot of uh, college classes and, you know, you've given me the opportunity on several occasions. And, you know, I, I, I kind of relate back that you got to like what you do. And, you know, we've all had some of those classes, none of yours, I'm sure that uh, people, you know, whoever you are, you might not, you know, totally like for my two boys, it was accounting. They, they got through it, but they didn't enjoy it. And, uh, you know, to, to try to set yourself up in a career that you don't enjoy is a mistake. And, you know, the old saying, I just want to get my foot in the door and then I'll kind of move into something that I like is a mistake because you're not going to present yourself in the manner that, you know, if you were in something that you really had the passion for, it's going to come shining through. You're only going to get to fake it. So that's, that's number one is to make sure that you're in something that you enjoy. And, you know, my family is my, my wife doesn't know any other way, as I mentioned, you know, middle school, and she's kind of grown up with me. So she has never known anything different, but uh, I like to say quality over quantity and, you know, just trying to prioritize and to be there. And I, I try to make my family a, a part of what we do. So they've been on different events with me. They've, They've been to different press conferences just to kind of share. And they, you know, both boys are, are, are getting sports management and master degrees. So it's uh, kind of ironic, but uh, quality over quantity and make sure that you prioritize. And uh, you can always adjust. You can always kind of make sure that you're, you're going to be there. And I can't tell you that I, I haven't been double or triple booked some evenings or some days, but I try to make it a point to do it all. And, uh, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's, uh, it's a balancing act. You know, I, I was scheduled to uh, join FSU out in uh, uh, California at the Rose Bowl when we won that national championship. Had the tickets, had the, the everything was there. And uh, the day that, of that game was, you know, came down and it was uh, Coach Lovey Smith's press conference. So I had to cancel. And uh, we, we announced Lovey as our next head coach. So there are some, some times that, you know, are, unavoidable, but uh, there's a lot of perks to what I do as well. So you just got to kind of balance it out and stay grounded, um, stay grounded and, and make sure that you don't forget where you came from and, you know, prioritize. Well, I know your boys and I know Judy, and I know you're very proud of your family as you should be. They're a great family. Here's, here's a, I, I remember there was a time in the eighties where I really, I was a kid and I said, what do I really want to do for a living? I want to be a professional athlete, but for whatever reason, the Tampa Bay Bucks didn't call me up and ask me to do that. I wanted to own my own business. I wanted to work with the public and I wanted to teach. And I realized being a golf professional incorporated all of those things. Is there a moment in, in your youth, whether you were at FSU at the time, uh, where it was more of a transformational moment where you said, this is the direction that I want to go? Yeah, no, it was uh, working at Joe Robbie Stadium and, and getting into that and seeing the brand new stadium and just watching, you know, that, you know, that coming from the old Orange Bowl and, uh, you know, it was night and day and there were suites and there was clubs and it was just that environment. And I knew I wanted to get into that uh, arena and that's what kind of got me to contract food and beverage. And uh, as I went along, I always, uh, you know, getting pumped up for a big banquet at a convention center is, is not the same as a big game. And I knew I always wanted to get back and, you know, Phoenix was great and Pittsburgh was great and Austin, Texas was great in Atlanta, but we knew we always wanted to get back to Florida. And uh, when it was announced that the company I was working for fine host for all those years, got the account of the new stadium in Tampa, it kind of Two, twofold. It was back in sports, in the game and football that I loved in the new crown jewel of the NFL. And I've never looked back. So it's uh, very fortunate. And, uh, you know, the Glazer family, I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity because not uh, it, it's, it hasn't been done for somebody to come out of the hospitality business to lead a sports franchise. So it's, uh, 
it's a very humbling opportunity and I've have not looked back and you know what the NFL stands for, right? Uh, Dean? Yeah. Yeah, not, I do. No, no not, fun. Not for long, not for long. Oh. <laughs> now, when I go to these league meetings, I look around and it's, it's kind of ironic. Now I'm one of the long tending guys. So I think hospitality graduates in your position should be a trend. That's exactly right. I agree. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, similarities. And again, it's just exceeding people's expectations and throwing big parties. You can't control what happens on the field. Believe me, we, we would love to say that we could, and we'd love to be able to, but you can't. So you just have to provide that game day experience. And that that's in all sports. So I encourage any graduates of, of Deadman to look into sports or any College of Business uh, graduates. Sports is a tremendous business, but again, it's not Monday through Friday. It's not nine to five, and it, but it's a lot of fun, but you have to get into it for the right reasons. So I thought we had three hours for this event today, but evidently we got time for one more question. And we just had recently had, and it's still going on, our graduations here at, at Florida State University, face-to-face -face graduations, which have been spectacular. But a lot of these folks are going out into the world, you know, young people going out into the world thinking, How, what do I do? What advice are you going to give our uh, young graduates? Yeah, um, I was uh, I was very humbled in, in when uh, President Thrasher asked me to give a commencement speech last year when both my boys were gradu graduating at different levels, and I actually prepared for that. And it was uh, it was very uh, disappointing when those graduations couldn't take place. But the biggest uh, word of advice that I could give to that graduating class of 2021 for Florida State is to determine what your legacy is going to be and what you want it to be. And don't look back, you know, set your sights, you know, we're all going to be known for something. And, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're making mom proud and making sure that you don't uh, ever forget where you came from, continue to give back, continue to help and support uh, those that, that need it. And uh, you don't get ahead by stepping on people. Uh, but remember, who are you going to be? What are you going to be known for? And it starts the day that they, the, the day after they accept that uh, diploma and walk off that stage, they're starting their legacy. And, uh, you know, there's no shortcuts. There's no easy way to do it. So don't look for it. And, uh, you know, and be truthful to yourself. Don't do something that uh, others say that you should do. You know, as far as getting into sports, a lot of people, it's not meant for them because it's not Monday through Friday. And just because somebody says, hey, you'd be good at this, be honest with, with yourself. And I go back to that analogy of the class. If you're not an accountant, and no matter what the pay is or what the opportunity is, if you don't enjoy accounting, don't get into accounting. You know, the money will come, the, 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 the prizes will come, but be true to yourself and start start building that legacy so people know who you are. And that would be the best advice I could give. Well, I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate all you do for Florida State University and for the Dedman College and for your friendship, uh, most of all. And uh, it's great catching up like this. And I look forward to seeing you face to face here soon. Now, I, I can't, again, I'd like to thank everybody that's on this and thank you again for the opportunity. I'm humbled and uh, anything that we can ever do, the answer is yes. Uh, I look forward to catching up again soon. And Let's go Knowles. Let's have a, a good uh, graduation and a good spring. And let's, uh, we're looking forward to 2021. And I look forward to hopefully uh, seeing some new Buccaneer fans that are uh, Knoll related. And uh, you can join me down for a game and for hopefully training camp. But everybody have a great afternoon and most of all, stay safe. Thank you. And thank you everyone at the Alumni Association for allowing us to do this, Julie. Appreciate your Thank team. you so much for joining us. What a wonderful webinar that was, and I can already tell the sound bites we can pull for uh, advice to students, advice to alumni. Uh, that was just fantastic. For those of you joining us or perhaps watching this later, please look out for our calendar events over the summer. Uh, we'll definitely be planning a lot for the fall. Uh, you can find it at alumni.fsu.edu. Uh, click around, join us at a local club, get involved with your network, and then make plans to join us on future webinars and in-person engagements as we move through fall 2021. Thank you, Dean Farr. Thank you, Brian Ford, for joining us. And as always, go Knowles. <laughs>